Good morning. Barry Bryson here. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. We're in the middle of Matthew chapter 23 as we pursue our study of the Gospel of Matthew. And we're going to read verses 29 through 36. And, and Jesus will end his series of woes that he delivers to the scribes and Pharisees. And we remind ourselves these are woes, not curses. That doesn't mean that Jesus does not foresee and describe judgment because he already has in verse 14, if that fits in this chapter. We talked about that before, but he's certainly going to do it today. There's a difference between being proscriptive and descriptive. Um, when, 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 when Paul says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, he's describing humanity. He's not ordering. He's not, that's not prescriptive. He's not saying that every, it is destined for every person to sin. He didn't say that. He just said what he sees and what he knows will continue to be true, that people do sin and, and need to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Jesus is not ordering punishment in this chapter. He's describing the logical consequence that is about to take place because of who they are and, and, and giving them as dire a warning as he can possibly give to them. Some of these men are going to be converted in the book of Acts. Uh, I have no doubt. We were just told that many, many, many rabbis, many priests, many, many are going to be converted in Jerusalem before the church is scattered to, to the rest of the empire to take the gospel. And, and I have no doubt that Jesus' own warning will be resonant with them when they hear the preaching of the gospel in the early chapters of the book of Acts. But let us, let us remind ourselves what we're going to learn next time, that Jesus is delivering woes, not curses. And he's not strutting around, taking out of his enemies and dancing in glee on their, on their graves. That's not what Jesus is doing, and that is not his tone of voice. This is, these are woes. These are given in sadness. Let's read 29 through 36. What do you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous. But I say to you and, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partners with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Consequently, you bear witness against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets, fill up then the measure of your fathers. You serpents, you brood of vipers, how shall you escape the sentence of hell? Therefore, behold, I am sending you the prophets and wise, sending you prophets and wise men and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify. Some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. That absolutely happened, and it happened quite soon. That upon you may fall all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Truly I say to you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Okay, um, so um, um, he's now talking about the way they have set themselves up as enemies of God, as their fathers had done before them. And he really is going back to the imagery of the a parable that he just told, that he just told on this day about the, the, the wicked um, farmers, you know, the wicked, uh, wicked vineyard workers who, who, who uh, you know, abused and killed all of the all of the vineyard owner's servants and ultimately his son. And that's what Jesus is describing here. You think you're not sons of your father? You are, because you're about to kill me. And you're going to keep killing people that God gives sins to you to try to teach you the truth. I'm wondering if Saul was in the crowd that day and heard this. I mean, he's certainly in Jerusalem very early in the history of the church. One imagines that he was in Jerusalem for the crucifixion of Jesus. I don't, I mean, it would be logical to assume that. And I'm wondering if he heard all this today, that day, because he certainly fulfilled it, or at least he did early in his, earlier in his career. He did. We read about it in the book of Acts. He talks about 
um, the, the, the guilt of the righteous. And he talks about from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah. Uh, that's not the same Zechariah. You know, there are two different Zacharias. There's Zechariah that's killed in the temple. And then there's Zechariah, the prophet, who is the son of Berechiah. And a lot of people try to find fault with what Jesus has had to say as if Jesus is misinformed. Well, that might be a scribal error. I mean, um, it's, uh, I remember I was on a panel one time, a panel show that we had on television back in Huntington when I was working at the Rome Church of Christ. And, and, uh, and one of the other preachers kept wanting to refer to the Robert Frost poem, The Road Less Traveled, and, and kept saying Jack Frost. I mean, that's what people do. And I knew he knew the poem. I mean, he certainly quoted it. He quoted the entire the entire poem. So I knew he knew it was Robert Frost, not Jack Frost. It's just, and these are people in the first century copying by hand without electric lights, you know, the manuscripts. And so if, it's like when we, if we get upset about the text, does it say 3,000 or 300,000? What does it matter? It didn't matter to them. We can't apply 21st century historiography to a first century chat text. We just can't. Um, um, it's a way of saying, you know, from the beginning to the end. And it's cool in English because English the alphabet goes from A to Z. The Hebrew alphabet from Aleph to Tov and the, um, and the, um, the Greek alphabet from Alpha to Omega, we know that. But it really suits the, the English alphabet, and our English translation nicely does not it, from A to Z. And he says, you are so bad, how are you ever going to be saved? How are you ever going to be saved? And it says, if you, if you do what I know you're planning to do and will continue to do, there's no way you can escape judgment unless you stop. And that's, that's how he brings this series of woes to an end. Okay, we're going to look at those last three verses next time as we close out Matthew chapter 23. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word.